All right, so we're out here in the middle of February and uh, we're gonna pull the engine off the trike and do a rebuild. My trike's been sitting out in the snow, it's dead. It was running like shit last year. Ended up stopping running and uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull the engine off and we're gonna do a rebuild. I got a new piston and gasket kit sitting in the garage and I got my old bottom end sitting in the garage. And uh, there's a few reasons why I wanna swap to the bottom end, but we'll get into that a little later. So let's get started pulling this thing apart. First, we gotta pop the seat off. It's gonna give us access to the carb, air box, all that kind of stuff. Snow just makes it a little bit more difficult. Not too big of a deal. So we're gonna go ahead and pop the gas tank off. The fuel line is gonna be much more difficult to disconnect in this weather. Put that screw back in there. So I don't lose the bugger. Now around this side, we're gonna get the fuel line off. Gotta turn the fuel off actually first and foremost. Which I almost never do for this thing, to be honest. There's really no need for it. You need some pliers to get in there. Just pull that guy right off. And we can get the tank out of the way. Gotta tip it up and it'll slide back. Now we can pull the exhaust off. It's a little bit more complicated because we're not taking all the plastics off. If you wanna drop it in the snow, it'll be really hard to find. Okay, I'm gonna pull this back one off over here. A lot of times these old bikes, they got a lot of old and new and remanufactured parts on them so who really knows loosen that guy off that'll allow us to pull the front part of the exhaust off go ahead and replace those exhaust nuts now in a lot of cases you're not going to have an electric starter like this this is from a specific model called the 200m and i was able to get one and install my uh 200M motor onto my 200S that was not designed for electric start. I had to run my own electrical system for it. We can get into that in another video. If you're interested in learning how to create your own custom electrical system for an electric start, let me know. We're gonna go ahead and pull that wire off. That's just your ground for your starter. Even though it's probably grounded otherwise, I did this system when I was kind of figuring it all out. I'm gonna try and redo it for this spring so it's a lot more streamlined. All right, we're probably gonna have to cut these ties as well. That was easy, wasn't much to cut there. And we're gonna have to pull the carb off. That one's gotta go. This is gonna have to go. Just holding my throttle cable out of the way of the hot engine. When you're dealing with old bikes like this, it's definitely not about how they look, it's about how they work. There's lots of jimmy rigging. Although parts are pretty plentiful, a lot of time you're on the trail, you're getting this thing wet, you're swamping it. It's kind of like, just get her going. Get out there and have some fun, you know? Now, we're gonna go ahead and pull the carb off, which is a little more difficult than it should be for something like this. To do that, we gotta come back over here come back over here we gotta get inside the air box all you need is your fingers to pull these wing nuts and they got ends on them so they won't come off they just stay in there so you won't lose them makes it quite easy quite handy especially when you have millions of parts kicking around 
move on there pretty good. If I had gloves, it'd be no problem. See, gloves are kind of a love-hate relationship. They keep you warm and protect your hands, but you lose all sensation when you're trying to work on stuff. Now, a lot of the trikes that come with electric start, the battery will go here. In this case, because this one never had it, this is just the air box. Give you a look in there. Just working on minimal tools today. Just got the small tool bag out here. Those are a 10, by the way. Usually I'd be moving stuff like the exhaust and all that, but with all the snow, I'm trying to keep everything high and dry. If you don't know where your bolts go or you're not familiar with all the bolts on your bike, bag and tag, make sure you know where everything goes so when you put it back together, it's simple. Once you plop that loose, you need a bunch of play out of the air box. It slides back a little bit when the carb comes off. That's gonna make life a heck of a lot easier. Now we need the 10 again. We need to get in here. It's probably easiest with a wrench rather than a socket. It's another thing we could do a video about is uh, the critical tools you need to have in your tool bag when you're out riding. Now you'll notice this little hole right here. There's a, a uh, hose clamp in here. You need to get your screwdriver down in there. Now once you loosen that, you should get some play out of this air box. Of course, everything's frozen, so it's all more difficult in this weather. Okay, well, we're gonna go with plan B. Just loosening the whole carb off fully. I guess I already got them loose enough to go with the fingers. Once the carb comes off, give us more play yet yeah, pull it further and get it off of the air box and now we can move this whole assembly pretty easily of course you can't forget your throttle cable at least the carbs moving now I would normally advise doing this I'm gonna try to pry at the uh, boot that's in there. The boot's already a little bit damaged, so I'm trying to be really careful. The problem is, really, is there's not a whole lot of ways to reach under here. There's so much stuff in the way, so you're kind of working from the top down only. Nice, we got the carb sliding around in there. Come out relatively easy now, but the carb only comes out one way. It'll only come out towards the pull start side of the bike. Again, just simply because there's so much stuff in the way. Ah. Everything's just so cold. Relatively not that cold, but rubber doesn't like it. I'm trying to get that thing as far back as I can get it. The air box there. All right, I'm gonna try removing this second hose clamp. Get this boot off the air box, hopefully giving me a little bit more play and clearance. There we go, it's off the air box. Maybe we can even get the carb out of here now. We're also gonna have to remove a couple wires. Par for the course. Gotta get the carb over the case breather, which in itself can be a little tricky. Once you do though, even with that rubber, it should come almost out. If, yeah, there we go. So we got the carb out. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We're gonna need that in the shop. Now a great little thing to do is come back around here and put all the nuts and bolts back where they're supposed to go. At least just in place. So they're there when you need them. Of course, you have to disconnect the spark plug. Now let's have a look here. We've got a couple wires we have to snip. I'm gonna need a screwdriver to peel that guy open. It's 
really bad. It's really bad. Uh, so we've got a couple problems here. Good chance there's uh, a big part of the reason of why it wouldn't start is right here. So we're gonna go ahead and snip that. That would make sense though. After when, when I rolled it, it wouldn't start no more. So there we go. The only other thing we have to disconnect is this guy right here. Oops. Is this guy right here. It's gonna be your coil. Those just have bullet connectors. Oh, I guess we gotta do the starter too, don't we? And of course, in the cold, the rubber is rock hard. So you never wanna let your 10 millimeters slip away. I think we definitely found the problem as to why it died, but the other problems that we're gonna be sorting out are gonna make this like a brand new bike. All right, now the few things we have to do is we have to take this bracket off. We have to take this bracket off right there that goes across. And then we have to get underneath I believe there's one more uh, and there's some hangers up top right there and then this engine is going to be off this bike. We can pull the case breather as well. Another great tip for you is use these little ratchet connectors to go from 3 8 to half. Makes life a little bit easier. We're going to go ahead and get the vice grips on the one side of this. So it doesn't move. I think we're almost done. I'm getting chilly. Mini breaker bar. I definitely like them. There's some benefits to them over ratchets. There's also some downsides. So they're not for every situation. But they sure do come in handy if you ask me. Right, I'm gonna pull this out, this piece here gonna come off. You don't want to lose that piece. It's very important. The bottom one under here is a real tough guy to get at. It's even gonna be hard to see. The GoPro is right in there. Let's get around the other side with these vice grips. Uh, and of course the other thing I forgot is we have to pull the chain off. All right, I grabbed myself two extensions. So we're gonna make this a little easier. Get that in there. Then we extend this guy. Now we get right in there. No problem. There we go. Should just be able to get your fingers under there and fling it out. We need to take this front bracket off, then we need to take this top bracket off, and then we need to remove the chain. Now we're losing the sun. She's cooling down, and it's kind of stupid. There's four here. You think, oh, well, maybe I can just remove two of them, you know? But uh, the bracket ain't gonna come off otherwise, meaning the engine won't come off. So unfortunately, you have to remove all four of them and both pieces of bracket while you're at it. Perfect, now we're gonna have to pound these guys out. My tools are all freezing up. Still got two steps after this. There we go, got it moving. All right, so this one ended up being 9 sixteenths. And that's exactly what I was talking about, how you never know what the nuts and bolts are gonna be because I'm guilty of it myself. When you need something and all you've got is a standard, for example, you're going to use it, especially if it's in the bush. You use whatever you can get. The starter covers this one. You can't put a socket on it, so you got to get a wrench, or in this case, vice grips on it. They're in there pretty good. So what we can do take an extension, just 
like that actually. And it should fit just in there. And then you can kind of tap the extension. It's not a guaranteed workaround for it. But it does tend to help pretty good. Get around the other side here. Waited on this last bolt. But there we go, came out no problem. Now in my case, I've got this foot protector here. I came with it, but it's in addition that buddy who had it for us added on. All right, the brackets go on a specific way. You can slide the bottom bolts through just like that. Just like that, or at least one of them, so that you know how it goes back together. Again, in my case, I've done this so many times that for me it's pretty straightforward. All right, we got two more simple steps to finish this off. We gotta pull off this top bracket, which is really just one bolt, and we gotta get the chain off. So let's get this last one off in there with the vice grips. Lock her down. Of course, she went right in the snow. All right, the engine is now free. So the last step. And this might be quite tricky because it is in the snow right now. Last step is to pull this chain off. And then we're gonna pull the engine out. There's two ways to do it. There's the master link, but actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this gear right off to save time. Now because the motor has some play, it's actually not gonna be too hard. This should just come right off. I'm gonna turn this locking ring and just move the engine a little bit and bang. Now you certainly don't want to lose these guys, so best spot for them is probably right where they came from. And now for the moment of truth, the moment you have all been waiting for. And there it is folks, 200cc Honda ATC engine. It's from a 200M. It's got the uh, electric start on it and uh, it's about 60 pounds, so I'm gonna put it down. Ugh. All right, thanks for watching. That's part one. We're gonna hit the garage tomorrow and uh, we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna pull that engine apart. We're gonna put the old bottom end on it. We're gonna put a whole new top end on it. And we're gonna see what happens. Thanks for tuning in to Chaos Bikes. We'll catch you in the next one.